Well, it's the Halloween season, and that means I need to do something special on this show. So this October, I'm going to be doing all sequels to movies I've featured on my channel before. Even though I kinda already did a sequel-a-thon three years ago. Anyway, first up is Demons 2. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the first Demons and need to get caught up, here's what happened. <laughs> Now that clip may have seemed a little confusing, but actually, tells you pretty much all you need to know about the first one. So with the first demons proving to be an unexpected hit in 1985, Lamberto Bava and Dario Argento wasted no time making a sequel, with Demons 2 arriving just one year later. Like the first one, Bava sat in the director's chair with Argento again producing, or I guess presenting. Another interesting fact is this was also the big screen debut of Dario's daughter, Asia Argento. And considering she was about 10 when she made this, hopefully this isn't one of those movies where her dad insisted she get a nude scene. One difference you may notice is while the first movie had a soundtrack of mainly hard rock and heavy metal songs, this one leans more towards new wave and goth rock. Personally, I prefer the soundtrack to the first one, but I gotta admit, this one's pretty good too. And here's something the first movie didn't have, opening narration. A terrifying centuries-old prediction foretold the spawning of demons on Earth. That prediction came true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already played the fast as a shark clip, okay? You don't need to explain what happened in the first one. Jeez, this is looking like the opening to an 80s slasher movie. Uh, excuse me, you're getting strawberry jam everywhere and... Oh, okay, never mind, that actually is jam. I see this guy's busy preparing the final trailer shot to Happy Birthday to me, or Happy Birthday to Sally, I guess. Anyway, while well, the first movie took place in a movie theater, this one's set in an apartment complex. Let's see, should I make a reference to Shivers or High Rise here? Hmm, at least now we'll probably get to see the demons kill some 80s yuppies. Hey, are you having fun? It's not my fault the electronic system in this building stinks. <laughs> All right, that's enough. This is a respectable building. Get out. Damn yuppies, always screwing around in elevators. Also, didn't this guy die in the first movie? Eh, maybe it's his brother or something. And nice to see Tony the Pimp from the first movie not only survive, but also got a job as a personal trainer. Now he can keep his pimp hands strong whenever somebody doesn't do enough reps. Keep pumping, baby, keep pumping. <laughs> Good God, this movie is so 80s, they probably used cocaine instead of flour in that cake we saw at the beginning. Speaking of which, this is a birthday party being thrown for Sally, who's busy putting on her Sean Young cosplay. You look great, Sally. Honest. Not true. My hair stinks. Look, the whole thing's just disgusting. I mean, these slaves that go back and forth. Hey, I Jen. told you, I told you, it's just... Boy, I sure hope she makes it until the end. In the first movie, the characters gathered in a theater to watch a movie about demons. Here, the TV is playing what I guess is supposed to be a documentary about demons? This was the prediction that came true. The demons rampaged through the streets. Can it happen again? Will we be ready next time? Wait, so is this documentary saying that the events of the first movie really happened and that demons are real? Because if it is, the rest of the world seems to be pretty okay with it. You know what, I don't know why I'm even asking this. I mean, it's not like the first one made any sense. In any case, the documentary seems to be the only thing anyone's watching. Let's change channels. Don't tell me you want to see this stuff. Hey, don't be like that. Watching lots of horror movies as a kid can lead to more opportunities than you'd think. Man, everyone seems to want to watch TV in this building. Do you mind, uh, if we do it with the television on? I can't get an erection unless the Miami Vice theme is playing. George here can't watch TV or attend Sally's party. He's got to take care of his pregnant wife and study for a test. T to the 1 equals T minus VX over C2 bracket, where gamma equals one fraction square root of one minus V to the second. Is that right? Uh, sure. This looks like a pretty happening party. Italian John Denver even made an appearance. Too bad Sally insists on ruining everyone's fun. Jacob! And you told him to come here? You idiot! I don't want him to come! Will you all get out of here, please? Get out! Yeah, it's Sally's party and she'll be a raging bitch if she wants to. Even if a lot of the beginning is just setting up future victims, I am glad the nice cinematography from the first movie is back here. 
Is somebody there? <laughs> Come on. Huh. Well, that's weird. You usually don't see fake dog scares in movies. Oh, right, I should probably talk about the documentary everybody's watching. Much like the movie that unleashed the demon plague in the theater from the first one, it's about a group of young people in a spooky setting looking for demons. Although I can't tell if they're wandering through an Italian women's prison movie or an Italian post-apocalyptic movie. Not only does this documentary prove demons exist, but apparently velociraptors exist too. Look, the atmospheric photography looks great and all, but can we get to the scary stuff already? <laughs> It works! Alright, now we've had a fake dog scare and a fake 80s new wave scare. Wait a second, that song sounds familiar. It's too bad the series ended before they made a sequel set in space. That way we might have actually gotten a decent Doom movie. Alright, you found a demon, now let's get this plot moving. Some blood ends up landing on the demon and bringing it back to life, which I guess still makes more sense than Freddy Krueger getting resurrected by fiery dog piss. Look, forget her, okay? Sally's a buzzkill. Just get drunk and party without her. Instead of socializing, Sally would rather stay in her room and watch horror movies. Huh, you know what? Maybe she's more relatable than I thought. A demon, hey, that's crazy. And I'm starting to think they really did put cocaine in her birthday cake. Unfortunately for Sally, she accidentally put an Italian knockoff of the ring tape into her VCR. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Dario Argento presenta Videodromi. Luckily, the cable goes out just in time, although for some reason, Sally seems to want it back on. Now it's wrong. Huh? You idiot. Fix you. Good God, Sally's even a bitch to her TV. Yeah, that's it. Kill that wet blanket. That ought to make the party a lot better. Whoa, be careful with those candles, will ya? There's enough hairspray in this room to set the whole building on fire. You know, getting possessed by a demon seems to have really improved Sally's personality. She's not complaining the frosting on her cake's the wrong color. Oh, and remember the effect from the first movie where a woman's teeth fell out as she was transforming into a demon? Well, why not use it again here? We didn't build this fake head of Sally for nothing, you know. <laughs> That's it. This is the last time I'm coming to one of Sally's parties. Another guy making a return from the first movie is Sergio Stivaletti, handling the demon effects once again. And just like the first one, the demons here are just the right combination of cheesy and awesome. Hell, combined with the music, parts of the movie look like they could be an 80s music video. <laughs> Considering the show's called Brandon's Cult Movie Reviews, I guess it's appropriate they're playing a song by the band The Cult. Oh, and the demons have acid blood now because fuck it, it's cool. This shit doesn't have to make sense. Just like these random cutaways to the outside. To eat like a dog. Just so Sally can have a, a party. Do be patient. It's her birthday. If you're wondering what any of this has to do with the rest of the movie, the director just felt like making a cameo. Alright, is there something more important going on back at the apartment? More energy, Mula, more energy! Come on! This is gonna end with them all having an orgy, isn't it? Hello. Ah. You finished too. And I think those two are about to bang in an elevator. Sally's acid blood ends up knocking the power out, which also traps everybody inside, mainly because this is a really poorly designed building. Oh well, nobody seems to be that bothered by it. See you tomorrow. Okay. Hey, Mula! Did you hear what I said? Sorry, no days off, bro. Hashtag rise and grind, am I right? The lights have gone out everywhere. Well, thankfully the mood lighting still seems to be working. Here, just use your bug zapper as a light source. <sighs> the air conditioning is turned off. And in this stupid building, you can't open the windows. Double panes, bulletproof, they say. Did you read that in the building's exposition manual? And uh-oh, demon dog. <gasps> What's happening? Yeah, they say never kill a dog in a movie. Well, this one makes them undead. Also, I know the power's out, but you could probably still leave your apartment. <laughs> Eh, 
Eh, let's be honest. That woman was probably gonna die in her apartment and get eaten by her dog before anybody found her anyway. Get out! Get us out! We're in danger! Shut up! We're in here! Shut up! Get him out! What's the matter with all of you? Shit, not only did Sally unleash the demon plague on the building, she also infected that woman with her whining. One of the most iconic moments from the first movie was the classic shot of the demons coming up the stairs and running down a hallway. So hey, might as well just do it again here. Hannah is really starting to get worried. It's been almost an hour and George still isn't back with her pickles and ice cream yet. Only one way to deal with this demon outbreak, by getting jacked as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's for hogging the machine, asshole. Ever wanted to see a crossover between Dawn of the Dead and Killer Workout? Well, now you got it. And what good is all that exercising if you're not even strong enough to open the damn door? They flee to the building's parking garage and barricade the entrance with seats. You know, I feel like I've seen this before, but I can't think of where. Oh, right, yeah, the first movie. Some people don't like it when sequels stray too far from the original. Shouldn't have that complaint about this movie. Oh, sure, but add a little kid, because that's what was really missing from the first one. Look, they already turned a dog into a demon, so don't for a minute think you're safe, kid. I will give this movie credit. Just about every shot looks like it would make an awesome still for the back of the VHS box. I can see why this was a popular rental back in the day. <laughs> Come on, Sally, the kid's in the vent. You're almost there. Damn, almost got him. They're in the elevator! Oh. We gotta get out! Come on! Please, let us out of here! Maybe you should just stay in the elevator. I think it's the safest place right now. Seems a hell of a lot safer than lighting a fire in a confined space, that's for sure. They're coming! Ah, uh, damn it, I knew we shouldn't have put a trampoline in front of the barricade. Okay, first rule of demon killing, shoot him in the head. Or just wherever, it doesn't really matter. Now go search all the cars! Take anything that can be used as a weapon! Chains! Wrenches! Anything you can find! It's our only chance! Even if Bobby Rhodes' character isn't as memorable as Tony the Pimp from the first one, I am still glad he's in this movie. Here's another part that's similar to the first one. This also features a random carload of punks that come in partway through the movie. But while the punks in the original look like Dead Kennedys fans, these ones have more of a Love and Rockets vibe. This is an announcement for the transit dead. Mainly because that's actually what they're listening to. Please, slow down, you're gonna kill us! I told you already. I never had an accident. Well, there's a first time for everything, pal. <laughs> and that's it for that subplot, because after that, the punks aren't in the movie anymore. Alright, I guess that counts as being different from the first one. So how are the people in the building doing? Oh, there's gotta, gotta be a way to get out. Again, stay in the elevator, lady. Well, at least Hannah seems to be doing better. Who is it? Please let me in. My parents went out, and I'm frightened. Piss off, kid. I got demons and pregnancy cramps to worry about. I don't need your shit. And see, I told you the kid wasn't safe. You really gotta give it to the Italians, they don't give a fuck. The scariest thing about this whole situation is now Sally's gonna start complaining that the kid is featured more prominently on the box art than she is. Now the first movie had a memorable scene where a weird gremlin monster randomly popped out of a woman's back. So, what's this movie gonna do? <laughs> Ah, ghoulie out of a kid's stomach. Alright, I guess that's a bit of a twist. I'm starting to get the feeling they just took the script for the first movie and replaced movie theater with apartment building. Also, I was just joking with the ghoulies reference, but this thing really does look like it's straight out of a Charles Band movie. This movie spent a lot of time referencing the first one, so to change things up, how about we homage another horror movie? <laughs> All right, this thing's a little ridiculous, even for this movie, so let's get rid of it. <laughs> that thing will be back once they make demons go to college. And damn it, what did I say about leaving the elevator? No, way! Please don't leave me here. Dude, just leave her there. <laughs> if it were me, I'd leave her there even if she wasn't a demon. Then again, if it was me in this situation, I'd be screwed. I never was good at this in gym class. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>
Oh, good. He won't have to listen to her scream about being trapped anymore. Quick, George, your wife's getting attacked by the cheesiest effect in this movie. Hmm, <laughs> umbrellas. A demon's one weakness. You know what, I can poke fun at this movie all I want, but when it comes right down to it, it does still look pretty cool. Okay, time for the climactic showdown of Brawn vs. Brains. And yeah, I know that zombies not demons, but as far as this movie goes, eh, same thing. Ooh, low blow, dude. Oh well, at least Bobby Rose made it longer than he did in the first movie. And why the hell didn't anyone think of this sooner? You've got cars, just run the fuckers over. I said run the demons over, not start a demolition derby. <laughs> Don't worry, Asia, Dario's fine. Even if his recent movies aren't. Oh, well, the parking garage is fucked. Guess these two will have to find another way out. They're coming up. Stay here. And don't move. Stay here? I thought you just said they were coming up. Rather than stay put, though, Hannah just can't resist helping herself to some birthday cake. Pregnancy cravings are a bitch. And what the hell are you doing, George? Haven't you seen Die Hard? Just find a fire hose and rappel down to a lower level. <laughs> Alright, actually that was pretty badass, too. So again, just like in the first movie, our main characters try to escape by heading for the roof in order to reach the outside. But unlike in the first movie, this doesn't have a random helicopter crash or Michele Suave as the Terminator. So it's a little disappointing in that regard. Will we make it, do you think? Of course we will. You remember the rescue courses last summer? Uh -huh. It's exactly the same thing. They taught you how to escape a building from demons? They better hurry up, Sally also made it to the roof. Damn, that girl is relentless. She's determined to ruin everyone's day. <laughs> yeah, that was alright, but it still got nothing on Sawabi's death from the first one. And don't go in a theater, that's where this whole thing started! Wait a second, what the hell is this? Did they just wander onto the set of that aerobics TV show from Nightmare City? Hannah starts going into labor, but at least her birth has a rock and soundtrack. <laughs> Congratulations, Hannah. It's a headbanger. All right, they escaped and had their babies, so looks like things worked out okay. God damn, Sally's bitchiness truly can't be killed. Okay, maybe it can. That was a weirdly anticlimactic death. And when are these people gonna learn? Don't watch movies with demons in them. You know what? This started with a demon coming out of a TV. Why should it start making sense now? Considering how similar it's been to the first one, you might expect the movie to also do a version of the infamous fake-out ending from the original. But nope, Hannah and George have their baby and successfully get away. Hey, this movie managed to surprise me by not ending exactly like the first one. Uh... Good job? Although not as popular as the first film, Demons 2 was still successful enough that both Bava and Argento discussed making a third movie, which didn't end up happening. Although ideas for it would eventually be recycled from Michele Suave's The Church. And because this is an Italian series, that means there's a ton of movies pretending to be unofficial sequels, most of which look like they'd also be good candidates for this show. But what about the official sequel? Is this a worthy follow-up to the original Demons? I guess, in that it's basically the same movie. Plot-wise, it's basically a rehash of the first one, right down to copying scenes and even certain shots from the original. But also like the first one, the photography's nice, it has a memorable soundtrack, and once the demons show up, there's plenty of blood and carnage, even if some of it gets pretty silly. Much like the original, it is an entertaining ride, just don't expect it to make a whole lot of sense. There is one thing holding it back from topping the first movie, though, namely the fact that it doesn't have this. Okay, to be fair, it would be pretty hard to top that. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. <laughs>